Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So today I am running my new LG um, LG one horsepower dual inverter AC. Uh, why they call it dual inverter is because it has a low surge, so you can run it on a much smaller um, inverter. And in addition to that also, it has a energy saving mode which allows it to consume substantially less than an AC of the same capacity. In fact, there's a setting you could put it to where it uses only about 350-360 watts. There's so many settings, I'm yet to figure it out, but when I do, I'll let you know. But it's currently running on my solar, and I'm going to go downstairs, and I'll show you some updates, and I'll also show you how much I'm using to power this AC. Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola again. So let's start by, let's look at what's going on with my batteries. Currently, they are at 56.7 volts. And as you can see, the difference between cells is 22 millivolts. And I'm 92% charged. Let's compare that to what the Victron Energy Battery Monitor says. So Victron says I have, let me see. 56.66 uh, volts um, currently 4.6 well it's that it's fluctuating so much but I have a little over 11 amps with my AC going in and while well, negative 252 watts going out now because it's fluctuating the MPPT on the inverter keeps um, going in and out the batteries are 94.5 percent and okay so as you can see now the MPPT just turned off on the chat the MPPT on the inverter just turned on it keeps clicking in and out and the production varies so let's go to the inverter and we'll take a look so right now that AC is on let me see, you can see what I see battery 56.7 volts 81 percent full if you hear the click you see it just disconnected the panels it just connected the panels again. Let me see if I can see my consumption. Load is 36% and I'm currently pulling 1,461 watts. That's what I'm pulling with the AC on. With this fridge on. This fridge is on and the other fridge in there. So, the last time I did a video, I told you that I purchased a bunch of things that I was going to hope to use to make uh, my batteries perform better or last longer. And one of them was... One of them was... Could you hold this for me, please? Just hold it. Thank you. One of them was this. It was supposed to be a balancer and equalizer. Well, guess what? It does not work. It does not balance, it doesn't equalize, it doesn't do jack, so it was a waste of money. Um, the other one was this one, and this is just a balancer at the top. And it does come on and off, but the batteries have to, have to hit 4.17 volts before they do. So I'm leaving it on. Um, it, does, it does some top balancing. As you can see, my Nissan Leafs, my trusty Nissan Leafs are still in use. And they're doing for me what I well what I expect them to do. I did a capacity test yesterday, and what I did was I I fully discharged them, and it says I took 66 amp hours out of them before it shut down. So I have my shut off set at 50 point something volts or 51 volts. I don't remember exactly what it is. And what you see is as you start to get closer to those numbers the cells start to drift and then the difference in voltage between the cells start to increase so that's where you start to see that some bad, some of the cells don't have the capacity of the others which was the reason why I bought the balancer and equalizer and I had a difference of over 160 millivolts which is a ridiculous number but this morning the cell balance has a charge and the difference now is only 27 millivolts so quick tour of my system uh, here's my trusty Schneider. I'm going to reconnect it because um, the MPPT on the inverter is not doing a very good job. It keeps, um, because it's cloudy, it keeps turning on and off. 
Here is my trusty Victron and in a second I will turn the app on and show you what it's doing. My Victron Energy Phoenix, I want, I'm going to sell it. Fantastic inverter but um, doesn't really do for me what I want it to do. And then my Growat which I've been using for a while. So I'll be right back in a second and I'll show you the screen from the video. Hello YouTube, I'm back. So right now as you can see production is only at 6. 49 or 665 and you could see the PV voltage 110 7.8 amps coming in my battery voltage is 56.63 and I'm putting 11.3 amps in and the battery is in bulk let's look at the history as you can see three days ago incredible performance over eight and a quarter kilowatt hours um, these two numbers are the same because we had turned things off to disconnect that uh, battery equalizer uh, 4.21 and 2.41 6.6 from this set of panels and from the one in the grow at 3.5 and so far today we've done 4.15 kilowatt hours and I think on the grow at we're a little under a little over one now back to that battery balancer equalizer sold to me by IC Go Go I've been having conversations with them and uh, those conversations haven't gone as well as I want. He now admits he's a reseller. He purchased it from someone and the person, he's going to send it back. I want, I told him I want my money back. As you could see, he says, uh, I, I return to you. You refund my money. And um, he's given me his address and his phone number and his name. And it's just been a bad experience. I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy these things from them anymore. I'm not really sure that they know what they sell. Um, I'm not sure they've even tested it. You know, he put me in touch with someone who kept insisting that he was doing his job. And when the drift this morning occurred was when they agreed with me that it wasn't working. You know, he's telling me that it's basically balanced at um, 0 0.03 to 0 .0, 0.03 to 0 0.05, which in my mind is absolute nonsense. Um, they do not, but they balance better with the with the BMS I had before than they do with a standalone device that's supposed to do uh, what they claim is supposed to do. So I was not a very happy camper. I'm going to send it back at my expense to China and hope I get my money back. I'm buying the uh, Delhi Green 1S balancers. I've uh, ordered seven. I should actually get eight. And when I do the test, I'll let you know. I think it's very important that we do um, equalization on these batteries, it allows them to last longer and the balancing I think is really important but any BMS or any device could do the balancing. So I hope I've sent, given you enough information, I'm stepping outside to show you some. Hello YouTube, you can see it's cloudy day, a little windy and I want to show you my AC unit. We are still missing the hose, there it is, it's running. I don't know if you can catch the water dripping, but I can show you. Let me see if I catch it in my hand. The hose is going to get connected so you can see. Here's the water dripping out of it. And you see the ground is wet here. So I'm pretty psyched. Um, I get to run air conditioning. Um, you can see it actually. You can get a, a view of it. It's cloudy. The sun keeps, you can see where the water is coming out from the incomplete hose. Let me see if I can zoom in. So, um, I know it's a lot of content, it's a lot of stuff. I'm going to go into the office and I'll show you the BMSs we have and then what our plans are for them. Anyone that has any information that could help me with these batteries is very welcome. I've struggled to get them properly charged and each time I start charging them, I have one battery that goes faster than the other. I tried discharging them using resistors. Where are those resistors? I tried discharging them using resistors and they weren't discharging. These are 25 watt, uh, 2.7 ohm resistors. I put three on each and let them sit for like three hours and I wasn't having any luck. It got very hot. They got down to 2.9 volts. Uh, see here, here the voltage we saw, 3.19. Sorry, let me get this to focus a bit. Sorry, okay, that's better. 3.19, 3.23, 3.09, 2.9 for 303. And then when we started charging them back up again, 
They had one battery that ran off, and the others that we, we were still stuck at 3.30, 3.335. So if anyone has any ways I could properly equalize and charge these batteries, I really welcome them because this is over almost $1,700 before shipping sitting here, and I need to get them. I need to get them into my system, so I appreciate any feedback and any help to charge these batteries. So here's a new BMS I picked up. We're going to be connecting it hopefully by tomorrow you see it running and then you get an idea of if it does the job or not. Um, I purchased this from China of course and hopefully we'll see them in action tomorrow. I bought a bunch of these. These are uh, 14S, 48 volts and what I like about them is they come with the ability to get them mounted on the wall and the wires are already crimped. I don't have to worry about all that crap. Uh, case with a heat sink so we'll let you know how this works out okay and then um, let me see what else I want to show you this is junk did not work I had them on those batteries those lithium-ion phosphate batteries I showed you and they're supposed to try to bleed from one to the other did not do it same thing this another piece of junk I purchased from the same guy from IC Gogo doesn't do jack wasted my money um, I I was using a a B, I was using a BMS from you know a 4S BMS from for an 18560 and I saw 3.9 on those batteries and if you see 3.9 on those batteries you kill them. So I have more of these and I have a bunch more of these. Maybe I should do a giveaway on some of these things because I have way too much of these things in here. I should do a giveaway if I, if someone can tell me how I can get it to them from either the US or from Nigeria without breaking the bank then I'll do a giveaway of one of these BMS's I have. So once again this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you have any questions please post them below. If you are yet to subscribe please click subscribe. If you like my content give me a thumbs up and then please share them with your friend. Oh, um, as a last minute thing, I still have some of these chargeries I've not used. Uh, the reason we're not using them was because we couldn't get the contactor. My guys couldn't figure out how to connect the contactor. And I think on this trip, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Get this, since I'm completely off grid, get this contactor connected and it will allow us to disconnect the charger while, you know, once it exceeds a certain voltage. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola here. So I know you asked me a question on how to get the allow to charge, allow to discharge to work on your charger because your charger does not come with um, MOSFETs to stop charging but it sends a signal to a contactor. It's actually easier than I realized myself. So I have a charger that doesn't balance. All it does is it sends a signal and once the signal is sent, it does what it needs to do. So if you look on here, give me, give me this one. Thank you. If you look here, there is a charger plus, a load minus, and to BMS to battery. So what we did is this charger plus, this charger plus side is coming to the output side of your contactor, and then from your bus bar, which is your charging source it comes into the input side of your contactor. Then you take your two signal wires, which will be the two, let me see, the two most extreme to the out, out to the inner side, and you put the positive on the first side, which is also, which corresponds to where it's coming in from, and then neg negative to the outside, which is where it goes out from. And once it exceeds your voltages, you hear the clicking, snapping sound, and it stops. It stops charging. So if you want to do the same, you can connect a second one to stop discharging. It's a pretty nifty tool. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so I know people have asked me this question before. Now it's done. It was actually easier than, um, it was easier once you figured out it took less than 15 minutes to do. And we're in business. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos.